So after a few less than action filled chapters, we get right back into the thick of things for all you action junkies. So you better grab your sacks cause we're on the attack, baby. Did he just tell me to grab my testicles? One Piece Chapter 246, Satori, Priest of the Forest of No Return. <laughs> All right, and now we're getting right into the thick of it. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and epic and Indiana Jones-like tale of One Piece. Our last chapter, of course, saw, uh, we really saw two different sides of things, but uh, we were left with uh, with Luffy, Thanji, and um, Uthap, of course, coming upon the uh, the four challenges. The challenge of the ball, the challenge of the string, the challenge of the swamp, and the challenge of the iron, if memory serves correct. Which we can only assume are four challenges that symbolize the four priests of the god Enel. Uh, at least that's what I'm thinking anyway, so that's where things left off. We did see the other group, but we don't see them in this chapter, so there's really no point in talking about what happened there. Uh, so we kind of start out right over here, and I thought this was rather funny. We have just kind of the silhouette, shadowy faces of the four priests, we can assume, of the Kami, the God, Enel. So we have the first guy, and he's just like, a class A criminal offense. They have no respect for the god. And then the other one says, let's give them the challenge. They choose, we provide. Then there's this other one that says, guilt is to live with ignorance. And then this one says, there is no peace to be found in the heavens. And uh, which is kind of a, a counterproductive statement because really, you know, whether you believe in whatever, whatever your belief system is, right? If you believe in a higher power, in a god, uh, in an omnipotent uh, invisible being, that is up there somewhere that grants wishes on a, you know, personal whatever basis. Um, the point being is, is regardless of it, I mean, you're not right or wrong, and I don't, I don't weigh in on that type of stuff, but the whole thing with that is that in exchange for your kind of, you know, ultimate, you know, um, I don't know, what would you say, submissive, subversion? Basically, you know, for your faith, uh, you're supposed to be rewarded. And the kingdom of heaven, right, uh, as far as I've known, is is supposed to be a place of peace and calm and love and all that sort of stuff. Um, so this kind of contradicts everything, which which I think is, is actually very, uh, very funny uh, in a way, because uh, certainly there's more than meets the eye to these priests and this god, uh, and I don't think they have anything... Um, omnipotent about them or otherworldly, uh, more than likely they're probably just stronger than the average people, kind of like Arlong and his fishmen were, or uh, or maybe have devil fruit abilities. I don't really know. But anyway, we'll dig right into the chapter. So uh, we, of course, start out with, you know, Luffy and, and Usopp and all after the, the guy, those priests all say their little spiel, you know, and um, and they wind up going, they're figuring out where they're going to choose, where they're going to go. And uh, and then Luffy says, let's do the challenge of the ball. That sounds fun, you know. <laughs> Usopp's like, or Sanji, one of them's like, you know, you idiot, it's not supposed to be fun. It's a challenge, you know. So they wind up going through the tunnel of, you know, the challenge of the ball. And as they get, uh, they're going down here, it's dark and Usopp can't see and steer and they're going faster. And then they start freaking out, thinking like, what if it just dumps us? out, you know, down to the blue sea, it's 33,000 foot drop, and Usopp's like, God, they say your life flashes before your eyes, but a 33,000 foot drop, that's going to be a long freaking flash, right? <laughs> so uh, so anyway, all, all, all kidding aside, they wind up coming out of this dark tunnel and, uh, and kind of fly off of what appears to be like, you know, almost like a cliff or whatever, and they're all, ah, you know, through midair, and you see the boat from different angles and everything like that, the waiver that they're on, and then all of a sudden, you know, it splashes down a couple hundred feet below, and, uh, and they're like, oh, whew, all right were alive so um they don't know if that was the challenge or now they're in the challenge they don't know what they have to do what the challenge is all about but they see a bunch of these milky clouds uh in the size of you know i don't know maybe like three by three foot you know round shaped balls make sure you wouldn't get three by three whatever you get the idea you know a ball that's about as big as this you know and they're all like kind of floating around and everything they're like oh milky clouds so they're cruising along in the river and everything like that, and everything seems fine. They're talking, and Luffy's talking about, let's have some tea and some sky crackers and everything else. And then all of a sudden, you flip the page, and one of the sky clouds that gets close to them, all of a sudden, you know, a snake comes flying out of it, right? <laughs> and Luffy winds up, you know, having to knock it away. And I'm like, what the hell? And then Sanji's like, oh, they must all be trap clouds. They all have snakes nests in them? I'll take care of this one. And the next one that comes close to him, Sanji's like, whoosh, and goes and kicks the thing, right? And next thing you know, man, boom, there's an explosion. And you see the three of them, and it looks like something straight out of, like, a Looney Tunes uh, cartoon, because all three of them are just, like, the frazzled, like, burnt hair. And, like, you know, they just look like they've just been blown up by TNT. 
Uh, so obviously that, so basically what they wind up figuring out is that all of these white clouds are booby trapped. And, um, and they wind up figuring that out because they wind up hearing, they're all booby traps from an ominous voice from somewhere. So they look up and they wind up seeing um, the guy who's introduced as one of the four priests. And uh, he is Satori, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the gods' lieutenants, I think. Yeah, one of the gods', well, one of the gods priests, I'm sorry. I thought it said Satori of the something. Jeez, here, let's find this little fella, this little chicken man. That's what I call him. Satori of the forest. Yeah. And it says Kami's vassal, but we'll go with God's priest. Let me see if we can get him up in focus over there. Son of a bitch. All right, there he is. So you see this rotund-looking man, and when I saw him at first, I thought, it looks like they took a ball, right? A big ball. And then they went and they took and they found uh, Django, right? Wherever he's doing now with the Marines and everything like that. And they took Django's head and put it on top of this dude's body. Because that's what it looks like, man. He's got, like, these round... Except for instead of the the, it's the glasses that Django always wore. He has these round spectacles. But he's got this hat on. So the long hair. And he looks just a spitting image of Django. So, um, but anyway, and then he's this big round guy. And it's funny because he talks about all the challenge of the ball and this and that. And then they're like... <laughs> Luffy's like, yeah, but you're a ball. <laughs> you know, because he's this big round guy. So, uh, you know, he kind of tells them that, uh, obviously, they're going to have to get through the forest. Blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and Luffy goes and he's just like, you know, Nami and them better be okay, you know. And, uh, and he says, uh, he says, no, this is, uh, he says, well, I, says, I don't know about that, you know, but nobody escapes the, you know, the altar and, and what have you. And, uh, and basically the only thing you're going to find here is death, you know, so <laughs> what the hell? So he goes to come at him and then, uh, and then, and then, you know, Sanji's like, take care of him, Luffy. And then Luffy goes, and as he goes to pull his hand back, I had to read this twice to see this Satori goes and he's just like, oh, stretching powers, huh? And then Luffy's like, gum, gum, pistol. And it's the panel after that. But the way it's drawn, if you're reading it real quick, you wouldn't pay attention to that at first i didn't catch it until the next thing so luffy you know shoots the pistol out and the satori dodges it and just i mean just waylays luffy and for a big brown ball dude with wings he moved quick because he lays luffy out man luffy go flying off the boat and luffy go it looks like he's knocked the fuck out his eyes are white you know white glassed over and uh, his hat goes flying up in the air and usopp's like what the hell and you know, so anyway, so he goes to, you know, to Luffy's aid, and uh, and Sanji then goes, and he's going to come at him, you know, with, we assume, a kick, you know, and he's like, I don't know how, you know, how one hit could have hurt him so bad, one measly little hit, and the, and the guy's a sitar, he's like, one measly little hit, what are you talking about? So he winds up talking, he winds up going in, and then he says, you know, right leg head kick, right? And uh, so, and that's what Sanji was about to do. He predicted it, you know. And then Sanji's like, you know, Kalie, you know, goes to kick him in the head. And of course, he gets waylaid and everything. And then the guy goes, and, and Sanji's thinking he can predict our moves. What the hell kind of guy is this, you know? So this big ball of, of roundness uh, over here, um, certainly, you know, I mean, he could have been in like a Charmin commercial uh, if he had played his cards right. But you know, whatever. So he's working for the God and L. Uh, but this this dude's you know more of a more of a badass than you actually um, you know than you actually see on the surface. So anyway, so then he goes and he talks about you know how it's like you know not everybody has the power of mantra you know. And I'm thinking okay, well obviously he's got some kind of ability like a spider sense almost for that's what I would compare it to for like Spider Man where he can kind of like see things before they're coming. Um, so anyway, all three of them are, are now knocked out of the boat and are, are over on the um, on the shore, you know, from the, the Milky Road that's winding through the forest. And uh, and he's standing, Satori's standing over on their boat, right? And then he tells them about how they got to complete the challenge. Uh, their boat's going to basically wander around aimlessly, you know, uh, until it eventually goes on an exit without them on it. And uh, and pretty much just doom and gloom type stuff. And he's like, only 10% of the people who, you know, kind of come, come up against us here in these challenges and whatnot, um, you know, actually survive and blah, blah, blah. So we know that the chances are slim and the odds are against us. Um, and really, that's just kind of how the how the whole you know how the whole volume ends. We're at the end of the volume twenty six or the volume and the chapter, um, you know, just ends that way with uh, everybody you know having got. I mean, don't get me wrong, Luffy is not knocked out. He actually does wind up getting up, and uh, he looks pissed. But you know, he's just like, listen, welcome to the forbidden sacred land, the upper yard. Ho! Oh, only ten percent survive the forest of no return. This is the challenge of the ball. Um, so it definitely ends off on kind of an explosive note and really kind of gets things moving. So we kind of set some of the scene, the tone, the background, the characters, the ambiance, and now we're kind of getting into the meat and potatoes of it. And, uh, and certainly all you action fans out there that are like, oh, those chapters were a little bit dull. Uh, now you, you know, you got some of your, uh, some of your fix with the action. So 
My chapter question is, what do you think about Satori, who was just, of course, recently introduced in this chapter, and now we've actually formally met one of the, uh, you know, one of the God and L's four priests. Uh, what are your thoughts on him, his character design, and just what we've seen so far uh, about his powers, and uh, obviously one of the main things being this mantra, being able to kind of predict things before they happened, uh, you know, so which could certainly be a very, very handy uh Thing. I could think of a lot of great things and do a whole separate video on that power. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you think that I should deserve it. Um, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. Yeah, this is what Luffy done look like after he got bitch slapped by Satori, the uh, bowling ball of the uh, hidden forest of magical dreams and unicorns.